Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Monastery. Please rise. Good morning. Good morning Father. We welcome all of you to our chapel here at St. Paul Monastery, and we also welcome those of you who are joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. And as we come together today, we come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue, to commit inequities and dies. It is because of the inequity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness that he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy of being of the same mind with the same love united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard yourselves as regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out, not for his own interest, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God 
something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself. Taking the form of a slave, and found human in appearance, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But then afterwards he changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order, and he said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just a few announcements before we begin our reflections this morning in the Vestibule af uh, after Mass this morning, we will be selling tickets from our Knights of Columbus for our football uh, fund craze, as we do this every year. It's a way that we can gather money for us to do our charitable needs, and um, they provide you with some teams from November 1st to January 3rd, uh, $2,500 a week prizes, $25,000 total. And so when you get your ticket, which is $20, they'll give you four teams. And you want those four teams to score as many points as they can 
for as little points as you can, because you win. If they win, you win. If they lose, if it's in the middle, you don't win anything. So if you want to help us out, those tickets are in the back there for you. Also, just a reminder that I am hoping to go to the Holy Land next March. So if you're interested in doing that, I think one brochure back there. Um, you can let me know if you're interested. I can give you more brochures or give you the website to go to. I was hoping to go in November, but uh, didn't work out. So we're going to try to go in March, and hopefully that will work out as well. And finally, on Saturday, October 17th, which is only a couple of weeks away, at 10 o'clock in the morning, we're going to have a memorial mass for two of our brothers that passed away earlier this year. Uh, Brother Kevin Cahill, who died in New York, and Brother Dismas BQ, who died here in Ohio. Uh, Brother Kevin ran our Alba House bookstores for many years back in the 70s and early 80s. And Brother Dismas, of course, ran our AV department for many years and served here running our cameras on Sunday. Uh, because we had no funeral mass for Brother Kevin here, and many employees and many friends wanted to honor him, and we had only a funeral mass for us in the community for Brother Dismas, uh, we are having this memorial mass uh, on Saturday, October 17th at 10 a.m. So if you want to come and honor these two members who were in our community for many years, so we'd love to have you come for that mass uh, on that Saturday. Last weekend, I was busy at a Holy Family Institute Triduum, a three-day retreat that we had here at St. Paul Monastery. Now, the Holy Family Institute is part of our Pauline family. It's for married couples, widows, and widowers. And these are men and women who have consecrated themselves to the Lord by taking the various vows in, in the church. And so if that is something you married persons are interested in doing, see me at some point, and I'll be glad to give you further information. There are over 300 members in the United States, and I forget how many we have around the world. So if this is something you might want to uh, be a part of, uh, let me know. Because our theme was Complete My Joy, which was a document by uh, Bishop Olmsted from the Diocese of Phoenix talking to married couples, husbands, wives, fathers, and mothers. And it comes from today's second reading of Paul's letter to the Philippians. And it basically said in that document that the love that the Trinity has, the complete love that the Father has for the Son, the Son for the Father, and then outpouring in the Holy Spirit are what couples are to have, a complete love for the, the wife to the husband, the husband to the wife, and then that's outpouring in their children, and then outpouring into all the people that they know. And so St. Paul is challenging the Philippians that they are to look at caring for one another, completing their joy by following Jesus Christ in their life. And that's what we are called to do, to make sure that we are humbly serving one another, looking after the needs of others, putting others' needs before ourselves. And so this is the way that we show the love that the Lord has for us. And he tells us in that letter, he uses the example of Jesus Christ himself. He says, Jesus Christ didn't hold on to his divinity, his equality with God, but he emptied himself and took on the form of humanity, took on our way of living and experienced the pains and the sufferings that we have and showed us a way that we can show love and blessing and concern for one another, showed us how to overcome sin and death, and showed us how we are to share the presence of Jesus Christ with one another. And so we are called and say, how can we put forth others? Look for their needs. What are their concerns? What are their issues? Do we need to assist them in some way or another? Because if we begin to do that as we are helping others, then others are going to turn around and begin helping us as well. And so we need to be able to do that. Now, in today's gospel, Jesus Christ presents the story of a father and two sons. And he comes to one son and says, why don't you come out and work in the field? And he says, yes, I will be there, but then doesn't show up. And the other one says, no, I'm not, but then mm, changes his mind and shows up out in the field. And so basically what it means is that we individually, as the sons and the daughters, have to make the choice, are we going to follow the Lord or are we not? 
and he was saying that the prostitutes and tax collectors were following because of John the Baptist, those who were very holy, those who were part of the temple, those who were part of the leadership at that time were not following the Lord. They were saying in their words that they wanted to, but in their actions they were not. And so we have to say, do our words say, yes, we're going to follow the Lord? Or at times do we say no, and then we realize that we do need to commit ourselves to the Lord. And so we have to make that decision. We can't blame others. We can't blame the system. We can't blame the church. We can't blame all other people. We have to make that decision ourselves. So today, let us complete our joy in the presence of the Lord, experience the love of the Trinity in its fullness, and so that we share our love with one another, the grace with one another, the blessings with one another, and all of us make the choice that we are going to follow our Lord Jesus Christ every day of our life. Let us stand together now and share our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord is kind and merciful, and so we offer our petitions to God, seeking a response of kindness and mercy. (coughs) For the church, that we may always put on the attitude of Christ and empty ourselves so that God can raise us to a new life of faithful relationships and loving service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests who are ordained to serve our church, that their ministry may be faithful and appreciated by the people of God whom they serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that the Holy Spirit will bring healing to those who are ill, give strength and wisdom to those who care for them, and inspiration to those working on the new vaccine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the homebound and the sick, that God will protect them, renew their spirits, and restore them to wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those impacted by the hurricanes and wildfires, that God will comfort those who have lost their homes and their livelihoods, help them connect with family and friends, and fill their hearts with courage We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we pray this Mass, let us remember Nicole Peters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for healing for Robert Donaher, the nephew of Brother Ed. We pray to the Lord. And for Kirsten Pepperney, who is dealing with stage four cancer, that the Lord will heal her as well. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 
Lord, hear our prayer. Generous and merciful God, a sinful people turn to you as the ultimate source of justice and mercy. Listen to the prayers we make here today, and in your kindness and goodness, answer us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give thee thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Hosanna, Hosanna, 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, all our bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us turn and offer to each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion for those unable to be with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We thank all of you for joining us here at our chapel at St. Paul Monastery, those joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. I thank our musician, our readers, and again, all of you for being with us today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.